The indelible impact of black athletes throughout the UFC's history is something that cannot be overstated. In celebration of Black History Month, UFC Ultimate Knockouts has curated a collection of some of the most incredible knockouts to come from black athletes in recent years. Derek Lewis's unbelievable power has led him to some astonishing highlight reel finishes, and his win against Curtis Blades earned him an extra 50K. Curtis Blades, the heavy favorite in this matchup. He has never been an underdog in his entire pro fight career. These guys have been on each other's radar for quite a while. Oh, big run! Lewis does it again! Do you believe it? Derek Lewis with a knockout. He's got a dozen tied for the most in UFC history. Curry shoots in from a distance. He sees it, boom, on the chin. That was it. Delayed reaction, he falls down. One, two, heavy shots. Man, so impressive. Uppercut to the dome, to the chin. He was unconscious there. He was already unconscious. And then three extra heavy, heavy blows. One, two, ooh. He dipped in for the for the takedown, right? And you gotta look out when you're when you're in there with Derek Lewis. One shot can change things quickly, and it certainly did that. Derek, the Black Beast Lewis. Neil Magny was eager to spoil the octagon debut of Cage Warriors vet Craig White. Four fight winning streak entering the octagon for Craig White after his move back down to 170 pounds. Oh, knee to the face for Neil Magny, and now he goes to work with White covering up. Under a minute to go, first round. Magny's pouring on the pressure, but Craig White is not out of this. He's still trying to scramble and create space. Magny sensing the moment to finish. Good work, Good work. Repeated by Neil work by Neil Magny, and there it is. Neil Magny managed to turn into the fence with the underhook. He landed the knee because Craig White had left his head very low. And then here, Neil Magny's pouring on the pressure. You can see Craig White is trying to fight out, but he's stuck up against the fence. There's the knee, straight to the nose, took his legs away. Respect to Craig White for trying to scramble out, but he was jammed up against the fence, taking shots. A great stoppage by referee Leon Roberts there, and a good performance by the top 10 fighter, Neil Magny, who holds ground. It was a battle between Dana White's Contender Series alums when Ode Osborne faced off against Jerome Rivera. Wrestled one year in college, did Ode Osborne, then they got rid of the program. He had ideas of maybe chasing an Olympic wrestling slot, but uh, turned to MMA. It's worked out for him so far in his career. Oh, oh wow! Left oh Ode Osborne piles on. Oh, that's it. That left Under 30 hand. seconds Ooh. to get it done for the Jamaican sensation. We look at the high kick Rivera throws. Ode rolls it and then just oh. throws that straight left right down the pipe. I mean, lands right on the chin and it gives Rivera no chance to recover. But watch him roll the shoulder. He rolls the shoulder, takes the kick on the back, and then just returns. I mean, that was fantastic by Ode Osborne. It's nice to see Ode Osborne have that type of performance. What a knockout and what a way to get your first UFC win. After suffering the first loss of his career, Jamal Hill looked to get back in the win column by taking on Jimmy Crute. Keep blasting these kicks because if you know Hill, you know he does a lot of his work with his hands. Yeah, well, he's going to work with the legs straight away. Oh! oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was a flash knockout. Nasty right hook there by Jamal Hill. I mean, he's lucky the referee didn't step in because he fell hard. But he looks like he's recovered. Needed the body out of the break for Jamal Hill, who has an early moment with which to work. If I'm Jimmy Crude, you're getting on your oh! bike. You got him on his hand! Do it! Jamal Hill! Sweet dreams! And he's clearly powerful. Let's take a look at it. Here's the first one. Boom. Looping left, though. Kind of catches the back of the head. Drops him face first. But then Crew tries to get the takedown, just like the Anthony Smith fight when he was hurt. But here's the end. Take a look. Boom. Right hook. 
clean to the jaw, puts him down. Mark Smith stops it on the spot. Let's take a listen in real time. Oh my goodness. No step in right hook, it was nasty. Drop through into the fight. Jamal, sweet dreams here! Of William Knight's nine professional wins, eight have come by knockout. Against Fabio Chirot, Nightmare sought to increase both of those numbers. As Chirot starts to find the range, it could be trouble the way he's moving back. It's irresponsible, man. That's very... That's very oh! Oh! Tries to go back, look at this. Just throws that left hook. I mean, it, it, his arm's not even bent. No. It's not even turned. It's not, it's right? not accurate. It's you not see, how you're supposed to throw it. He's so powerful that, look at that. His arm's straight. His he's shoulders bent His shoulders like turned. This. He hit him with the front of his fist. I didn't even see it, to be honest. Dude is crazy powerful. Wow. That's a huge, huge win for William Knight. With an impressive submission win in his UFC debut, Jeff Neal wanted to show off his striking skills against knockout artist Frank Camacho. He can't take many more of these straight left hands, though. I don't care how tough you are, you can't take these straight left hands right on the button that many times. Oh! That's it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He took a few of these kicks early, but this one, again, out of nowhere. Boom! Right on the face, on the chin. Camacho's already gone. He's already gone, man. Walk off now. I mean, it, it can't go any better. You know, no follow-up shots needed. The kick lands, and good night, Frank Camacho. I mean... And credit oh. to Big Dan Mergliata for being there and seeing it immediately and stepping in between them. But Jeff Neal knew it as well. What a tremendous performance by Jeff Neal. He's got a bright future in the UFC's welterweight division. We've got more incredible KOs coming up. Keep it here for more UFC Ultimate Knockouts. Terrence McKinney put the entire lightweight division on notice when he stunned the world in his Octagon debut. Both fighters successfully making weight two and a half inch reach advantage with the underdog, Terrence McKinney. Oh! <laughs> Terrence McKinney maximizing the debut! Wow! Whoa! Boom. 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 My God. I mean, perfect. Perfect one, perfect. two. It might might be the record for the fastest knockout. One, Oh, my two. God. That's it. You could have stopped I mean, it right there. So unofficially, seven seconds tied for the fourth fastest finish in UFC history. But Terrence McKinney, man, did he deliver on the big stage. Terrence! T-Rex McKinney! Before Jared Cannonier made his home at middleweight, the killer gorilla was battling in the UFC's heavyweight division. Cannonier was the minus 160 favorite coming in. Cyril Asker, the plus 130 underdog. Oh! oh! Huge left hand for Cannonier! Oh, Asker's not gonna survive this. this! The killer gorilla! Jared Cannonier! Take a look here. Beautiful handiwork. Fakes the left, comes straight right. And look as he shifts his stance to a lefty stance, brings his right leg forward as he comes over the top with that left hand. Watch this. High level stuff that we're seeing now in the UFC. Fighters like TJ Dillashaw, Dominic Cruz, guys shifting stances mid combination. Excellent work there from Cannonier. He said to me this week that Asker gets a little predictable, and on his side, he didn't want to be predictable at all, and it paid off, and he has got some massive, massive power. Woo. The elbows end the night and spoil the UFC debut of Cyril Asker. Jared Cannonier. In her climb back into title contention, Jermaine Durandamy had her first bonus-earning performance against Ana Elmos. Oh, brutal, brutal knee to the belly there. Another, oh, oh that oh, one hit. Dropped her. Jermaine Durandamy blowing the doors off in Rotterdam. We 
here's that full tie clinch now from Durandamy. She was just missing the chin. So she says, you know what? I'll switch it up. If you're sticking your hips up so you can't go to the head, I'll switch it up and go to the body. And that's exactly what she did. Just brutal knee to the body. Jermaine Iron Lady Durandamy. Chaos Williams and Miguel Baeza are no strangers to victory by knockout. And when they faced off, there was no need for the judges' scorecards. And after some grappling oh, in the first for Baeza, it was all on the feet in the second. Big shots there. Keep in mind the left leg, which might not be feeling great of Williams after eating all those leg kicks from Baeza. I mean, Baeza's left leg might not be feeling great right. either. Ooh. That was nice. Oh, oh, man. Oh, so oh, man. Again. Oh! Wow! wow! Chaos once again! Cow wow. shot puts him to sleep! Whoa! Let's take another look. Hold on. So he goes for the calf kick. He goes again right now. Leaves himself up and gets caught with the oh. left and then the right hook. He was out flush for a moment there. Eats a couple of shots. Chris Tyone steps in. That's the right call. Got One, two, two three. Wow, right with man. the calf yep. kicks. And then you can't stay there in, in that target zone with Williams like that. You know he's trying to be aggressive. Lands the calf kick. You see Chaos really starting to swing. Off balance, though, but that, Ooh. oh, man. His whole head snaps to the side. The guard was high for Baeza, but then, man, that all the momentum in that big right hook. Chaos Williams gets the knockout win. Chaos, the Ox Fighter, Williams! Suffering the first loss of his career, Eric Anders bounced back in a big way against Tim Williams. Anders now looking to box in Williams one more time. Oh! Big right and a spin from Spinning Williams. Spinning back fist from Williams. Anders goes up top. Oh! Has the kick that time. Does that count as a knockdown? I don't know. I, I couldn't see the angle. I'd have to look at that on real. Oh, jeez. Oh, Eric Anders as Williams was scrambling to his feet. All right, here we go. So he was doing a technical get up. Yeah, that's clean. Can I see a different angle on that? Like a side angle? Yep. As clean as it gets. Right as his hand came up. Hand is, oh wow, I mean, it couldn't be any closer. As his hand is coming up, he lands the kick. Hats off to your boy, Eric Anders. Well timed, and another win. Francis Ciro gone, headed to hostile territory in Houston, Texas, to face Derek the Black Beast Lewis for the interim heavyweight title. Oh man, that one landed too. That kick landed right on the chin. But that's when Derek tries to get you coming in. See that? Oh, oh he's, he's hurt. hurt. It's under a minute to go. Lewis. It's this over. looks like it could be down. the end right here. That's it. It's over it's now. Over. And that is it. France has a UFC champion, Sid Ogon. The interim UFC heavyweight champion. Total domination on the road tonight. Outside kick, right? Because he makes you fight at range. He just beats you down, making you fight a technical fight. Heavyweights want to brawl. Derek Lewis wants to brawl. He never got a chance. Cyril Gaon literally just outclassed him. Throws the jab and look at that uppercut. Left hook. Even going into the fire, whenever you know Derek's going to start to throw back, Cyril Gaon went in there and just dominated Derek Lewis. Dude, this was impressive. He, he's a real problem. The last time we saw a heavyweight with these kind of kickboxing skills was Rosenstrike. And guess who beat Rosenstrike? Cyril Gaon. So here we are. This man is up there. He belongs here. He's proved it again. He took out Derek Lewis, which is no easy task, in his hometown. This man's ready for a title. That's all there is to it. Cyril Gaon is the real deal, and that probably doesn't even begin to describe it. We've got even more great KOs coming up on UFC Ultimate Knockouts. Keep it here. Chris Barnett produced a highlight reel finish when he faced off against New York's own John Vellante inside Madison Square Garden. 
more than that. Does things and they look pretty. But I think sometimes things don't need to look so pretty, they just have to have meaning. Oh! Oh my God! Pelante oh! down, cover it up! Oh my goodness! Oh my God! Oh man! Chris Barnett trying to close out his first UFC oh! win! Chris my goodness! Barnett! Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, that is so wild! Wow! That is so wild! I was talking about Barnett throwing something with some intent. That had all the intent in the world on it. <laughs> so I mean, that is as intent as it gets. <laughs> Look at this wheel kick. Oh, oh my, oh goodness. my goodness. John Vellante on his way down has got to be thinking, you got to be kidding. <laughs> right? that, yeah, yeah, for sure. 17th career win by knockout or TKO for Chris Barnett, the father of two. And that spinning wheel kick will serve to effectively change his professional life forever. Chris Barnett doesn't look like he's dunking the basketball. But I'm telling you, every time you see that guy do something athletically, you'll be surprised. It was a classic striker versus grappler matchup when Larone Murphy squared off with Makwan Amir Khan. So in Larone Murphy's UFC debut against Zubera Tahugab. Oh! oh! Still undefeated! Oh! Larone Murphy! Oh, look at the timing on that knee. And his corner was saying, no, and if he's gonna switch, do it later in the round. He switches, boom, right into that knee. He leads, he knows. He sees Amir Khani, dips his head early, and runs right into that knee. Well, Amir Khani shot that double leg in the first round from halfway across the octagon. You knew it was coming again yeah. because he had so much success in the grappling. Larone the Miracle Murphy. Kennedy and Zichuku was eager to spoil the UFC debut of fellow Dana White's Contender Series alum, Carlos Ulberg. That was a nice right hand by Ulberg. Oh, look at that leg slipping around. Oh! oh huge oh right goodness. from Zechuku! Oh, that's it! Kennedy oh, and Zechuku has knocked out Carlos Ulberg! Oh my goodness! He should relish this moment because this man came back from adversity. Look at this. Here Little it is. Hands. Here it is. Boom! Look at this right hand. Eyes roll back. Perfectly placed right hand. Low hands, chin straight up in the air. Everything they tell you not to do. In, in this exchange, he one of the things that he likes to do, Olberg likes to put his hands straight out and oh. hold on to you. Look how Kennedy just connects perfectly and just unloads with a barrage of left and rights and forces Herb Dean to stop it. One more time. Look at this. Boom! Right on the chops. You see the eyes roll back, and that's a wrap. So Kennedy and Zechiku started slowly tonight, but eventually produces the biggest win of his career by a mile. With both men coming in off losses in their octagon debuts, Phil Rowe and Orion Kosi look to move into the win column. Big damage under the oh, right oh, eye of Kosi, swinging away. Off the case, let's catch yourself. Knee, knee, knee. Oh, oh, my knee to the chin, and, and another one up top. And again. What is keeping him up? Oh, that just missed. That's a good one. Wait for it. Bang. Big right hand. Oh, oh he's almost done. This really might be done. teeing off. Another warning from Tyone as Kosi stops, oh. and that's going to do it. Wow. Phil Rowe with the comeback in round two gets it done by knockouts. He dug deep in the second round when he needed to. Wondering what he had to do to get him out of there. We just found out. Finally, we talked about in round one that Phil Rowe's got to use that length and that reach, and he did in round two. It was a big right hand that finally sits Kosi down. What was keeping him up most of that time, I don't know, but that fight was unbelievable. Biggest night in the career of Phil Rowe. The Fresh Prince getting it done and adding to his highlight reel. Eager to end his three-fight skid, Abdul Razak al Hassan showed up in a big way against Alessio de Chirico. You know who doesn't skip leg day? <laughs> yeah, right. Abdul Razak al Hassan. Lower half, man. Oh, oh my, God. my goodness! Wow! One and done with the leg kick. Thank you, Paul Felder, for calling it. One and done. Stalks him, backs him up, throws the kick. De Chirico actually leaned into it but look at that that just shows the power done shin on chin 
Only one winner when it comes to that. And now we're going real time sound up. That's what you call a sickening thud. Backflip to polish it off for the athletic and powerful Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Francis Ngannou's punching power has been on display ever since he joined the UFC. Of his 11 wins inside the octagon, 10 have come via knockout. When the Predator faced off against former champion and talented boxer Junior Dos Santos, Ngannou would need all of his striking skills to secure victory. Oh, oh man, they sting. And I'm just sitting here. I'm like tense. Oh, oh. my God. This is so nerve wracking. Oh! Huge oh, run from the Dos Santos He's still there. in a world of pain. Oh, Francis Ngannou. Too much. He swings, over swings, and gets clipped with that right hand. And then, oh, right on the chin, over the top, and doesn't see it coming. And then Ngannou just laying down some hammer fists and now big shots from the top. And Sagano just covers up. I think Juni is trying to match him for power, so therefore he threw everything he had. And when it didn't find the mark, he lost balance. He overcommitted, kind of turned his back to Francis, and there was the counter. My word, he does it again. Sensational first round knockout. Francis the Predator and God! Kamara Usman's run in the UFC has been nothing short of legendary. With a perfect 15-0 record in the UFC's welterweight division, the Nigerian nightmare has been dominating his opponents since he set foot on canvas. But it's his performance in matches with heated rivals that have made Usman into the fan favorite he's become. In a rematch with Jorge Masvidal, Usman was ready to end their conflict once and for all. Even watching Masvidal in the first round, right? Masvidal didn't have to rush like he did in the first fight because he had to empty the tank in round one because he knew he only had a round of cardio. This time he was able to fight through round one and he still feels good and confident starting round two. Oh! oh! Kamaru Usman with a huge shot! Still undisputed! 18 in a row for the best welterweight in the world! I told you! Kamara Usman's right hand is ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Here it is. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh my man. God. That is so perfect. Oh my goodness. Hey, when that, it's literally the perfect right hand. And look, he is out completely oh. cold. There is no question whatsoever what oh happened. Look at that. Look at how limp he is when he goes down. Whole body I mean, went limp. Perfect punch. He tried to wake up. Look, watch. After it hits, boom! Look at he's out cold. Look, you see him try to get up. He's trying here. Hammer fist and got And the it. hammer fist yep. shut the lights out for good. You, you, you Insane. know, Insane. You know, John said, Kamaru said he wants to show a better version. Guess what, Johnny's better. And boy, that's a scary thought. That's a scary thought. Kamaru Usman, his words, not mine. He is a real problem. The incredible knockouts you've seen show how important black athletes have been in making the UFC what it is today. Thank you for watching UFC Ultimate Knockouts.